In today's webinar, we will discover Northeastern University London. We will talk about scholarship opportunities and the application process. So as you can see, we, I will not be alone because here with me, there is a Marian, Senior Student Recruitment Manager, and Maya, Postgraduate Student Recruitment Officer, ready to answer to all your questions. So thank you for being part of this event and thank you to all of you. And without further ado, I would say, let's get started. So Marian, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Stefania, for that wonderful welcome. And hello, everybody. It's so great to have you joining us tonight. Thank you so much for making time in your busy schedule to join us today. So my name is Marianne Martin. I work in the student recruitment team, the postgraduate student re recruitment team at Northeastern University London. I've been working in higher education student recruitment for almost 20 years. It'll be 20 years this year. And it's always a pleasure to be able to meet with prospective applicants to inform you more about the opportunities available to you at Northeastern in London and to help you with your personal queries and questions. I'm joined here today by my colleague Hello, Maya. Maya, would you like to take a moment to introduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Marianne. Hi, everyone. My name is Maya. I work in postgraduate student recruitment at Northeastern University of London with Marianne. Um, and I actually also studied my master's uh, in the UK as an, as an international student. So I can definitely relate to your to the exciting journey that you're on now and I'm very excited to be here today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maya. So as Stefania said, we're going to get um, started in just a moment. We have some slides to, to, to share with you today that I'll be taking you through to give you more of a sense of who we are, what we have to offer, whether there's a program that might appeal to you. Do you feel free to type your questions in, but we will be saving them for a verbal Q&A at the end so that we can really give your um, each question its full consideration and hopefully give you the information and guidance that you might need regarding your next steps. So I'm just going to share my screen and bring up the presentation. I'm just going to wait until hopefully in view for everybody. <clears throat> Wonderful. So welcome again. My name is Marianne and it's my pleasure to be here with you this evening to introduce the postgraduate programs at Northeastern University London. So here we have a beautiful image of our central Dockland location in the centre, in Zone 1 Central um, London. We have water on both sides of our main building, the River Thames on the one side, and the beautiful St Catherine Docks on the other side. And we're all lit up here in this attractive evening scene. But before we focus in on Northeastern University London, I thought it would be helpful to tell you a little bit more about the university as a whole. We are part of Northeastern University, which is a leading private American university, with our main flagship campus being based in Boston, Massachusetts. We've been in existence since 1898, and each year we are consistently ranked very highly in the various um, top university and top global university rankings. Northeastern has a really exciting and growing global campus network. As I said, the main campus is in Boston, but we also have campuses in Vancouver and Toronto in Canada, multiple other locations across um, the States and across ourselves in the UK. So let's now have a little bit of a look visually at the map of campus locations. Some of these campuses focus purely on undergraduate recruitment, for example, Oakland, um, and others are not available to postgraduate students. But this is really designed just to show you the breadth of campuses, the, the spread of the campus network. And of course, you can see ourselves on the right hand side of the slide. We're very much Northeastern's European hub. And of course, we're the campus in terms of geographic proximity, the campus that's locally, um, located closest to everybody on this call tonight. We are small. We only have 1,800 students, um, but around 75 different nationalities. So a really nice diversity of, of uh, countries represented there within the student body. We are different. We're really unique within the campus network because we're the only one of the campuses that is also a university in its own right in its home country. So here in the UK, we have university status, which means from a legal and regulatory perspective, we are no different to any other UK university. 
It means we can create our own programs, teach our own degrees and award our own degrees. So if you come and study with us, you would graduate with a fully accredited UK postgraduate degree. Now we teach undergraduate, postgrad, all the way through to PhDs, even apprenticeship degrees and student mobility courses. These are short study abroad programs. If you come and do your postgraduate course with us, and upon successful completion, you would then be eligible to apply for a UK graduate visa. That's a really exciting opportunity to stay in the UK and work on that visa for a minimum of two years. You don't need to seek visa sponsorship. You would bring the visa to the company. And of course, upon graduation, you're going to be part of a growing alumni network at the moment, more than 280,000, spanning 170 countries. Hopefully some of you have already visited London, maybe as tourists, maybe for a holiday in the past. It is an incredible location in which to be an international student. And we were really proud to know that QS um, agrees with us <laughs> and we came number one in the 2024 QS Best Student Cities. Of course, it's a hub for any industry that you could possibly imagine. It's also very, very multicultural, a melting pot of cultures, of languages, of food, different foods available, a very, very cultured in terms of home to over 1,000 museums and galleries, many of which are free for you to be able to attend. But it's a great student city. Almost half a million students from around the world have chosen to come to further their education here in London at one of the diverse colleges or universities uh, that make up this, this student population here in London and it's an amazing location in which to be based in terms of thinking about your future career progression taking advantage of being um, right where everything is happening where all the employment opportunities are the business hubs and really networking thinking about your next step taking advantage of your graduate route visa and thinking about what you're going to do after you graduate it's also um, probably important to say that um, London is still very pro-European, voted overwhelmingly to remain in the European Union at the time of the Brexit vote. And we are home to a very strong concentration of European students and workers. And of course, London is a gateway to Europe from the United Kingdom. So a little bit now about our beautiful campus location. So we are a multi-site campus. We have a number of buildings, but all located within 15 minutes proximity of the main building, which is called Devon House. And the images here you can see are from that main building. We have the most enviable view. So we're literally overlooking Tower Bridge, watching the boats come up and down the river, the big cruise ships come through under the bridge, watching the bridge open. And then on the other side, we have the really vibrant and historic Dockland area. But of course, we're very, very close to the city, the central business district, and that's really home to all the main businesses in the UK. It's not only the central business district, but the ideal for the whole of the United Kingdom and the more than 1,000 businesses, and that's just on our doorstep. Our campus is growing, our multi-site campus is growing. We're very excited. We've just opened a business incubator whereby local startup businesses, three of which are in the sphere of AI, are going to be supporting our undergraduate and postgraduate students. And we have other buildings opening up to increase the facilities and the teaching space across undergraduate and postgraduate level. We partner with carefully selected halls of residence to make sure that we can offer our students the opportunity to live in a designated student halls of residence supported by NU London staff and more of that in a moment or two's time. Very, very vibrant student life, lots of different clubs and societies, some of which pertain to the programmes that our students are, are taking at the degree level. Others are purely for fun, as you can see, a really mixed uh, bag here, not, not a finite list, but just a little bit of a give you, wanted to just give you a little bit of a sense of the diversity of provision. Lots of different sports activities taking place. And we hold more than 150 events and celebrations throughout the year. Now our teaching week is Monday to Friday and our teaching day runs from nine till six. So in the evenings, there are no formal classes and that gives us a great opportunity to put on lots of different um, social events, career oriented sessions, networking opportunities, some of which are specific to postgraduate provision, others open to all the students across the whole university. 
So let's have a look now at the programmes that we're currently offering at the postgraduate level at Northeastern University London. <clears throat> So several of our programmes are really exciting. They're poised at the intersection between the humanities and the sciences, for example, artificial intelligence, data science, computer science. Most of our programmes are available as a one year full time or a two year part time option. We have two intakes per year. All of our programmes are running in September of each year and we have a select number also which have um, January start dates to offer greater diversity of opportunity to the incoming students. And the dates are aligned exactly to the US semester date. So we start quite early at the beginning of September normally each year. The vast majority of our programmes are taught in person at our central London campus, typically with smaller classes, the only exception being a distance learning online Masters of Creative Writing. And what normally happens is that you will take, if you're doing the full-time programme, one year full-time programme, three semesters of learning. The first two are the formal taught components of the degree, where you're going to be in class with your fellow students following through a specific syllabus, and that's designed to help you to become a specialist in the subject matter, but also in parallel to develop your research and study skills, because that's also a requirement of studying at a postgraduate level here in the UK. These are unique programmes informed by professional and research expertise of faculty. That means that they are not available elsewhere in our campus network. They're not the same programmes as are being taught in Boston. We actually have that flexibility, that unique opportunity to create our own programmes. So in many cases, you're going to be taught by people who've shaped their degrees. So you're really close to the original research that is informing the current teaching practices within the university. We have at the moment uh, a suite of four MSc degrees in artificial intelligence with different specialisms. They all have a September start date and a January start date each year. We're also, we also have a Master of Science in Digital Politics and Sustainable Development, also available for you to start either in September or January, as is our new online Masters of Art, Master of Arts in Contemporary Creative Writing. And then at the moment, and a few of these are still to be confirmed um, in terms of whether we will also offer them um, in January, but at the moment with September starting, we have a Philosophy and in Artificial Intelligence Master of Arts, a very exciting, very vocationally focused Master of Science in Global Investment Banking, and a brand new Project Management Master of Science. Just a quick word, two of these programmes are currently being revalidated. So there is some information that we are still waiting for. And we have a new program, Project Management, which we're hoping to launch um, in one of the upcoming intakes. So let's move on now to have a look at the programmes in more detail. So we're going to look collectively at the suite of Master of Science programmes. They share a common first semester. So you choose in which area you would like to specialise, whether that's the degree specialism of artificial intelligence and computer science, or AI data analytics, AI and ethics, or AI and technology leadership. But regardless of which of the four degrees you ultimately are pursuing, you will be taking the same courses in semester one as your fellow students currently learning across the other three degrees. So these will give you a thorough grounding in programming and mainly developing competency in Python, AI and data ethics. So we don't teach any practical sort of computer skills without helping students to have an understanding of the ethical and responsible use of the skills that they are developing. You'll also be looking at data, computation and algorithms and theory and applications of data analytics. Then in semester two, the courses that you will take will be specialist courses pertaining to your final degree discipline. And in your final third semester, you will undertake a practically oriented dissertation project focused on a substantial real world problem anything to do with AI, but it could be across any industry, and you will put forward a practical solution, um, essentially a solution that could be put into practice, weaving together AI, software, data, and the human use of those. So let's look, first of all, at the specialist courses that you would do in semester two. So if you're going to be specializing in computer science, these are the three courses that you would take. 
If you are aiming to become a data analytics specialist, you'll be incorporating machine learning, data engineering and project management. For the students specialising in ethics, you'll be looking at advanced topics and responsible artificial intelligence, which could span areas including, for example, the dissemination of fake news, automation, uh, you know, the increased fraudulent activity around biometric data, AI in healthcare, AI in the classroom, all kinds of it's a really, really diverse topic, but you'll also cover machine learning and natural language processing. And finally, if you're looking to become a specialist in the technology leadership sphere, you'll focus on business transformation, communication within businesses, change management, organizational structure and project management and communication. So moving on to those groups at our super exciting, very vocationally focused Master of Science in Global Investment Banking. We've designed this program in consultation and in collaboration with our partner Financial Edge, and you can see their logo at the bottom of the screen. Financial Edge are the de facto training body that train the new recruits, the newly hired staff at the Wall Street banks and the top investment banks around the world. So they are relied upon throughout a really intensive sort of two to three week um, on the job training to get all the new hires up to speed. They call it desk ready. So they will teach these new recruits everything that they need to know in order to be successful as an investment banker, desk ready. And this is the first time that Financial Edge has partnered with the university to be able to really unpack that curriculum and expand it into a one year master's. So it's absolutely what you're going to be doing correlates to the job of an invest investment banker and to that intensive training that the investment banks offer their own employees. So you're looking at accounting, financial modeling, corporation valuation and deal structuring. And these are the four processes that you really have to work through in order in that specific sequence as an investment banker. And they're going to allow you to use real time data and using company data to really learn the skills of the trade. And then in your final semester, you'll also be looking at financing. And the final project allows you to draw on all of the, the learning up until that point. And then there's a final speed hiring project um, or exercise where they bring in people from the top banks and you will have a simulation of the um. <clears throat> the interview process, the job hunting process that you would go through if you were a shortlisted candidates once you're applying to become um, an investment banker with one of the top banks. So it's extremely vocationally focused, giving you insights into what the banks are looking for and thinking about not only the um, technical knowledge, but also the transferable skills that you will bring from this program into the investment banking industry. Moving on to something completely different, we're very excited. We have our Master of Science in Digital Politics and Sustainable Development. This is very much an interdisciplinary program, weaving together politics, but placing that in a digital sphere. So it's almost sort of a very modern take on global politics and weaving into with that sustainable development. Um, and that might also include, um, for example, AI. So we can draw on the AI expertise elsewhere in, in our organization and looking at areas such as AI and data ethics, topics in responsible AI, but also ethics and political theory. And it's made up of a number of core courses, but a range of electives allowing you to personalize your degree program and take it in the direction that most appeals and is most relevant to you based on your career aspirations. Moving on, we have the Master of Arts in Philosophy and Artificial Intelligence. So this is almost like the sister program of the MSc AI and Ethics, but this has been created by the philosophy faculty, so it's more grounded in the humanities. And while there is an opportunity to undertake programming, that's an option for you. It's not a requirement to undertake that within the degree. All of our students will take four core courses that really interrogate that really interesting and critical relationship between philosophy and artificial intelligence. Again, helping you to understand the responsible use, the ethical application of artificial intelligence. Then you have the option to take two pathways from a range of five. 
Each of those pathways will contain two courses. So obviously you'll be able to see the range of available courses and decide which specialisms you would like to take from the choice of five. We have three that pertain to the philosophy side of things, and we've got two that are on the sort of tech side, including programming. And again, you would develop skills in Python and then also technology, AI and human values. So you could opt to take one pathway from the tech side and one pathway from the more traditional humanities philosophy side or two from philosophy or two from tech. So it really does give you that broad range of optionality. Moving on now to the MSc in project management. This is a new program that we are developing as we speak and more information will become available, but it's all about developing transferable skills that you can then apply in different industries to affect change. And it will dovetail really nicely with professional certification if that's something that you would like to go on to pursue. And finally, we have our Master of Arts in Contemporary Creative Writing, an online program. It's the only online program that we're currently offering. So very, very different again to anything else that we're offering. And it's designed for students who want to learn more about creative writing as an industry, how to become published, and of course, how to develop their own creative writing skills. The first semester comprises of a core course and a, a masterclass. You must take two masterclasses, but you've got four options to choose from, and those are genre specific. The two core courses give you a, a sort of a, a broad coverage of creative writing in the last 20 years, really giving you insight into other writers, because as an aspiring writer, you'll also be learning from other writers. And then there is a very exciting uh, course called Publishing Your Writing, which gives you insight into the publishing industry, including both the traditional and non-traditional routes to publication to support you in maybe putting your creative um, writing work into the public sphere. Your masterclass options are nonfiction, poetry, scripts and screenplays and short stories and novels. So you've got four options within which you can really develop your specific writing skills. And the final culmination is a dissertation, which is really either a collection of shorter pieces of writing or maybe the beginning of a novel, depending on what um, genre of writing you wish to specialize in. Moving on to learning support and starting with libraries, we have a broad range of libraries available to our students, the main one being the Northeastern University Online Library, which is available 24-7 as an online resource. But you can also avail of the three city of, uh, sorry, the three research and three lending libraries that together comprise the City of London Libraries. You can also um, gain a reader's card and use the British Library, which is a legal deposit library, meaning that every publisher in the UK is legally required to deposit a copy of every new publication, including electronic, in the British Library. So it's an amazing resource in terms of um, finding that hard to find text maybe for your dissertation. And finally, you can also avail of the Senate House Library in Bloomsbury. We offer a really broad and holistic range of student support services, ranging from support for students with disabilities who might need um, specific learning plans to be put in place with accommodations and provisions to support them in their academic goals, through to um, advice around budgeting, time management, study skills, including a maths tutor and an English language tutor if English is not your first language, and counselling provision that you can both sign up for or drop in counselling sessions. We also have a team of dedicated academic advisors on hand to support students with their elective choices and personalised careers support throughout all of the time that you study with us. And also, finally, support within your accommodation. And we're going to touch upon these two areas in more depth now. So looking at career support, so first of all, our team of careers advisors have not only ever worked as careers advisors, they've actually been out there in the world working in, for example, really diverse industries, including hospitality, luxury brand management, law, and the creative and media industry. So they're able to support you from a personal perspective in terms of their own network and their own work experience. They will offer you one-to-one -one support for internships and job applications. They'll also help you in crafting your CV or resume and your cover letter and putting forward um, a release application when it comes to the right time to make your job applications. They even use an artificial intelligence platform called VMOC and you upload your CV or resume into that and it will also score you. So you've got um, some AI support as well as the human support. They offer unlimited mock interviews. 
and will help you with your um, optimization of an existing LinkedIn profile or creation of a new one. Finally, workshops, speaker series, alumni events, and a jobs board are all there to support you in your career progression. <clears throat> We're also very, very excited, as I mentioned at the beginning, that we've recently opened a business incubator to um, partner with local businesses. And that will also potentially be useful to many of our postgraduate students. In terms of accommodation options, so each year we uh, carefully assess the range of options available to us in London, and we partner with carefully selected uh, campus uh, sorry, accommodation providers in close proximity to campus. And this year, we're very pleased to be partnering with You Go The Curve, which is an approximate 25 minute walk away from Devon House. You'll be in a community, so you'll be with other NU students, and you'll also have staff members living alongside you. They offer proactive care and support, so counselling sessions, social events, diverse social activities throughout the year. But of course, they're also there in case of emergency, accident or illness, providing you with 24-7 support. So it's a very safe and inclusive student community. Postgraduate students can choose to book either a single occupancy studio or an ensuite room with some shared living space, and the prices will range depending on whether it's a studio, which are more expensive, or the cheaper ensuite rooms. These are all 51 week contracts. We are now um, just about <laughs> to open the application process for students who will be joining us in September who are looking to book their accommodation um, for the autumn. So we're reaching the end of the presentation. Thank you so much for your patience. We're going to move on to some of the sort of logistical and practical side of things, which are always very important. So we're going to start off by looking at fees and funding. So first of all, these are the tuition fees for UK students. So we structure our fees. Um, we have two sets of fees, one for the domestic students, the UK fee level, and one for international students. So you can see here, the, um, the the domestic fee slide and then the programs but the fees for international students these are most likely the fees that would apply for you and you can also see on the far right hand side the scholarship provision this is the total package of scholarship funding available to our students comprised of a number of different scholarships but at present those aren't the total scholarship um, packages available so practical things which I think are important for you to know. While there is no final deadline, and in fact we will receive applications throughout the year, we operate on a rolling admissions basis, if you are looking to start your studies with us in September 2024, we would strongly recommend applying imminently within the next week by the 15th of May to receive early application funding. <laughs> Similarly, there's early app, um, acceptance funding available. If you accept and pay your deposit by the 21st of June. And don't worry if this is all too early and you're looking at 25 entry, we will have similar dates available to you. An early application and an early acceptance deadline uh, around the same time for 2025. In terms of entry requirements, we're typically looking at a good, strong undergraduate degree. That would be a 2-1 in the British system or international equivalent. If you're taking a US program, that would be in the region of a 3.0 to 3.3 grade point average. If English is not your first language, we'd also be looking for your English language test certificate, such as IELTS, to demonstrate competency in this area. We'll also be looking for an academic motivation letter. <laughs> You might also know this as a personal statement. It's it's your chance to really tell us why you're enthusiastic and motivated to apply for your chosen program, how you believe this will benefit you and what you're hoping to do following the successful completion of the program. And finally, we'll also need an academic or a professional reference from just one reference from either somebody who has taught you recently or somebody with whom you've been working in a professional capacity. And finally, a copy of your CV or resume. Now, this is all available on the website, so don't worry about remembering all the details, but to give you a little bit of a sense of the level of English that we will be looking for and the acceptable English language qualifications. So, of course, if you're interested to find out more, the first step is to ask some questions in our live Q&A. We're here to help you tonight, and hopefully we can give you those personalised responses. But of course, there's lots of information for you to be able to explore on the website at leisure. We have a great virtual tour. So 
so you can have a look around without physically uh, coming to visit. But of course, if you do have a plan to visit London, maybe you can take an extra day and add it to your holiday. We'd always love to welcome you to the campus. Just let us know in advance, drop us an email, and we can book that in for you Monday through Friday, sort of nine to five. You'll be, you'll be able to download other information, including postgraduate prospectus on the website. And this is the address. We'll also probably pop that in the chat towards the end of the session so that if you do have any individualized queries, for example, pertaining to your eligibility or the academic qualifications you may hold, or you want to arrange a visit, that would be the dedicated master's study email address to use. So that brings me now to the end of the presentation. So I'm going to stop sharing. So thank you everybody for your patience and we really appreciate your time and your attention. And now is really an opportunity for us to be able to hopefully address some of the questions that you've been popping in the chat and the Q&A throughout. So I believe that Stefania, you're going to be helping us with these questions. Yes, sure. So thank you so much, Marion, for your presentation. It was really interesting. And I see here that we got different questions from our students. So let's start to read a few of them. So I would start from this one. Uh, do I need to ask some references to ex-professors to apply to your university? Yes, yeah, so a reference letter is compulsory, but we can accept either an academic or a, pro um, a professional reference. If you are at university now doing your bachelor degree and you're applying to progress directly to a master's, we would definitely recommend that you reach out to one of your tutors, your professors, somebody who's able to comment upon your academic ability and they should be able to support you. But if it's been more than say two years since you graduated, we know it can be hard to keep in touch with your former professors and life moves forward very quickly. In that instance, we will be very, very happy to accept a professional reference from somebody who knows you in a professional capacity. We only need one reference and you don't need to actually obtain the reference. We will contact your referee on your behalf. You simply need to obviously talk to your referee and let them know what's happening and seek their permission and provide us with their name and their contact details and we will take up the reference on your behalf. Okay, nice. Thank you. And also, Rodrigo is asking, should I share my curriculum with you for the application? And do I need to put also the, my picture in the curriculum? So it's not compulsory to put a picture in your CV or in your resume. That's not a problem. That's not part of the admissions process. <laughs> there is one other document that you will be asked to upload, which is the identification page of your passport. That's simply so we absolutely know who this, you know, we have formal proof of identity again it's not part of the decision making but that's just a standard application but don't worry about having a picture within the cv or resume that's not required okay perfect thank you uh let's keep going um, do you offer paid internships we don't i'm afraid so a british master's degree a full-time degree is pretty intensive you're studying really the full duration of a calendar year so our undergraduates will be finishing up at the end of April, beginning of May and going off on a long, lovely long summer holiday. But you don't have that luxury as a graduate, as a postgraduate student. You're studying hard over the summer as well. So the holiday periods are short. They're really just breathing spaces two, one, two, three weeks at most. So it's a full academic program. There isn't really any space or room in which to incorporate the internship, which is not to say that you can't work part time and we can help you with that, but that's probably more a part-time job that students will undertake to supplement their income and to just, you know, generate some more income in parallel to their studies. Remember that you will be able to apply for the graduate visa upon successful completion of your, of your master's degree. And that means you can get, you know, a full-time job in the UK just the same as if you are a UK national. You don't have to worry about or think about the visa sponsorship. You've earned that right, in a sense, by successful completion of the master's degree. So you would apply for a graduate visa and go straight into full-time work after you finish uh, your master's degree. Okay, thank you. And Marianne, I was wondering, is it easy for students uh, in the UK to find a part-time job? 
we do support students to do that. So on the jobs board, you can um, look for part-time work opportunities as well as future full-time jobs. Uh, London does not have a shortage of part-time jobs. The economy is thriving. It's bounced back very strongly post-COVID. Um, there are many opportunities in retail, hospitality. We also have limited opportunities on campus, but mainly zero-hour contracts in the form of ambassador work. But absolutely, we will help you to find a part-time job in London. Okay, perfect. They are also asking if you help international students uh, to get a student visa. Yes, absolutely. So we have a dedicated team of visa specialists called the Visa Compliance Team. So Maya and I do not work in that team, but we have colleagues to support us. So the way it works is that the first step is for you to apply and hopefully you'll be successful in gaining an offer. Then to decide is this the right offer for you, the right course at the right time at the right university. And once you've made that decision from the different options you have at different universities, you will pay a deposit. And then um, once your offer is unconditional, which means you've met all of the requirements of the university, that university will sponsor your visa. And we can do that for students who are eligible for visa sponsorship. Generally speaking, and this is just very general, students from European countries are quite straightforward and fairly low risk in the eyes of the British government from a visa perspective. So as long as you make your decision early and you plan financially and logistically early so that you're not rushing anything and making a mistake through human error, you should be successful in your visa application. And as long as you follow the guidelines of my colleagues in the visa team. Okay, thank you. So now let's talk a bit about the course season. They ask if you offer courses to improve English. We don't, I'm afraid, no. So some universities do, but um, <clears throat> there are no shortage of English language classes and courses taught in London. Um, there are many very, very reputable schools which only focus on English language um, provision. Unfortunately, we don't. Um, contact the British Council if you're looking at English language courses in country. The British Council in your own country is always a very good starting point or you know, uh, they would also be able to direct you, I believe, to listings of English language teaching providers in London. If you want to actually come over and study English in the country so you're immersed in the language, that would obviously uh, develop your skills probably faster. Um, so lots and lots of opportunities in London or in your home country. But unfortunately, we don't teach English language courses. Just to clarify, the reference to the English tutor is support, academic support for our current students. So students doing a bachelor degree or a master's degree, you might need a little bit more help occasionally with their English and their study skills and their use of academic language. That's the in-house support that I referenced earlier. Okay, thank you. This was really interesting, I guess, for our students. So thank you for the suggestions also. And they are also saying, I'm really interested in the Master of Artificial Intelligence. Uh, do you think is it easy to find a job after this degree? So the reason we are teaching these programs is because very few other universities are offering these. And we are at the forefront of really evolving um, programs. AI is growing and changing and evolving so rapidly and every it permeates every industry so it's not an industry in its own right but it really permeates every single industry that you could think of and these industries are playing catch up because they don't have in-house ai specialists the people have not yet had the opportunity to become trained as ai specialists so we're really at the forefront of this and the skills that you will gain in any of our ai related programs are transferable into a broad range of areas including working for not for profit or working in government or working in profit and many of the job opportunities will pertain to the development of policy around ai ai carries so many risks because it's so new and it's not yet properly regulated so that means that businesses are crying out for people and upskilling their own work workforce to address these risks. So yeah, we absolutely strongly believe there'll be a broad range of opportunities available to our students. Thank you. And let's go with another question. Uh, Jana is asking, um, can I follow the courses online or do you have just presence courses? 
the only program available online and it's only available online is the master of arts and creative writing it's designed to be an online flexible program bringing together a writing community from around the world but all of the others are in-person programs we specialize in in-person teaching in small classes where you can really get to know the faculty and vice versa and they can develop you and nurture you to your fullest academic potential Okay, nice. Good to know. And okay, I just wanted to remind our students that we still have time for the questions. So if you have any curiosities, please just drop down a questions in our Q&A box. Thank you. Stefania, the... at this point, I'm going to say goodnight to you all. I'm going to hand over to Maya, who remains on the call for the final portion. Maya is on hand to help with any questions, but also you might have questions about, you know, what it's like to study in the UK. Maya herself has studied as an international student. She pursued her master's in the UK, so she'll be able to really share that with you from a first-hand perspective. So thank you, everybody, for your time, but stay on the call. And Maya and Stefania and the Doc City team will be here to assist you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Marianne. Thank Bye. You. Bye. And Stefania, while we are continuing answering the questions, I'm actually going to pop in the, the master study email in the chat for the students to yes. save. So as we are looking through the questions, um, if any of the, of the programs um, caught your attention and you want to learn more, please do get in touch with us. You can actually schedule a um, an individual consultation via Zoom with myself or Marianne to chat more about individual programs. Um, ask as many questions as you want. So, um, but in the meantime, I guess, let's see what other questions that you had for us today, Stefania. Yes, so we have a, a lot of questions regarding the life in, let's say the housing in the UK. So Great let's start question. from this. Um, they were asking if it is hard to find housing uh, in the UK or in London, and if you offer dorms. Great questions. Um, so as a per person who just moved to London one month ago, I can definitely speak to the whole experience. So I studied in a different city 10 years ago for my master's, but I just moved here to London a month ago for this job. So. I can speak about both. When it comes to the dorms, like Marianne said, uh, we don't have our own dorms on campus, but we partner with residence halls in the city where we actually book rooms in uh, in the residence halls and then we sort of then rent them out to students. So you don't have to deal with the dorm directly, you actually deal with the university to book the rooms. Um, and the residence that we have for postgraduate students is about 25 minute walk from campus, which is very convenient if you don't have to deal with the tube uh, or the buses in the city, um, which they're excellent. The subway system and the bus system is really good in London, but um, the, the walk is quite enjoyable. So it's about a 25 minute walk from campus. When it comes to looking, um, looking for accommodation outside of the residence halls, um, like Marianne mentioned, we do have a very dedicated housing team. It's a, it's a team of people, first of all, part of the team, they actually live in the dormitories uh, and support the students there. And the other half of the team, they sort of support the students who are looking outside of the city. They have a very extensive guide uh, for the students with a bunch of different tips about moving to London, uh, websites, apps, yeah, everything that you could possibly need when you look for a place. But there's a bunch of different apps that you can use to look for a place to live, whether you want your own place or shared room. I, um, since I moved here only a month ago, I'm just renting a spare room with a spare room app. So there's a bunch of different options depending on what your budget is and how close you want to be to the city. I know there's some questions about how affordable London is. It is it is doable. You just have to do a bit of research and sort of find your own, find your neighborhood, so to speak. But yeah, it is very doable. Great okay, question, so. thank you. And uh, regarding, to, um, let's say, the cost of living in general, not just the housing, um, how is it in London? It's, I mean, like like any other big city in Europe, London, Paris, Milan, it could get a bit expensive, but if you are not um like super central if you don't live in a very expensive posh neighborhood if you're slightly outside of the sort of the main the main center it's it's very affordable there's a bunch of free stuff to do in uh in london all the museums are free for for residents and for visitors um there's discounts for students um the buses are much cheaper compared to the tube so 
it can, um, depending on what neighborhood you're in, it can get expensive, but if you sort of find your place and budget well, it can be very doable. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, I see here that we still have a few questions regarding the visa. I know that mm -hmm. uh, we already talked a bit about it, but maybe uh, we can check again and of course. say to our students, uh, uh, let's say, some information more. Because, for example, they are asking, do you know if the student visa allows students to work in the meantime? That's a good question, actually. Yes. So um, when you are in the UK on a student visa, you do have a right to work up to 20 hours per week during the studies and up to 40 hours per, per week during the holiday. So when you're coming to the UK on a student visa, you actually have a month buffer before you start your studies where you, you're allowed to enter the UK. So you have those 30 days before your studies, and then you have another four months on the other end after you finish your studies. So during those times, you're allowed to work full time. And then during the spring break and the fall break, when you don't have any classes, you can work full time. All the other time during the classes, it's up to 20 hours per week. That's the rule for international students. Okay, thank you so much. So meanwhile that we are waiting uh, more questions, maybe uh, you can share with the students your experience in London and uh, how it is in general to live there, the things that you like or that you don't like also, and uh, how it is the life on campus maybe. Oh, the campus is so beautiful. I'm so, I'm so getting used to how gorgeous it is. It's, um, if you have a chance to check out uh, our virtual tour, please do. I highly recommend our campus is state-of-the-art, very brand new facility, and the location is gorgeous. St. Catherine Docks is, is beautiful. If, if you have a chance to take a walk on Google Maps, <laughs> or better yet, come visit us. Uh, Italy is not fa that far away from London. If you have a chance to visit London, um, just as a tourist, you know, um, uh, book, book a, a tour with us and we'll show you around and actually do a personal consultation for a program in person. So when you book a tour, it's not just a tour of campus. We actually talk to you about, um, you know, about you and what kind of program you're interested in. But life in London is, um, it's amazing. It's overwhelming in the best possible way. I'm still sort of getting used to how, how gorgeous it is here. Um, uh, the campus is absolutely fantastic. If you do have a chance to visit, please come. But if you've never been to London before, also come visit. That will give you sort of a, the best idea of what it would be like to, to live here is to come, come check it out in person. There's a few more questions coming in. Yes. Let's keep with the uh, London topic. Um, they are asking, are there some quiet areas in London? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I joined... Uh, Let's see, when did I join Northeastern? I joined about, I moved here a month ago and I joined about two weeks ago. And all of my colleagues that are meeting, they sort of live slightly outside of the city. So you actually catch a train to come to campus. And there's a bunch of quiet areas. Anywhere you go sort of a bit outside the city, it gets a lot more, a lot more residential. So any area that doesn't have like all the museums and all the theaters and all the life, um, there's pretty much all the other neighborhood that you go slightly outside the city, those would be the quiet residential neighborhoods. You just have to sort of explore. As you as you look for a place to live, um, you would go visit places and see the vibe of the place. But yeah, quiet neighborhoods, a bunch, <laughs> a whole lot of them here. Good question, though. I appreciate that. I do appreciate the quiet neighborhood where I live because once I come to Tower Hill, it's like, it's the live of the city. Like Marianne was saying, the London city, the business center is right next to us. Um, the campus is very lively. Um, you want to sort of get away a little bit to the quiet area. So I appreciate that. Thank you, Maya, for sharing. So we still have one more question. Um, and they're asking uh, if is it possible to be eligible for the scholarship from the Northeastern University with the GPA 4.5? Oh, wow. Great, great GPA. Um, so the scholarships that we offer are they're not necessarily merit based. They are the same kind of scholarship for for all of the students that apply. But you know, you never know. You could um, when you when you submit your application and you have a very excellent um, motivation letter and a great admission package, um, you never know if you would qualify for a higher scholarship. So 
but as far as I know, I don't want to make up an answer as far as far as I know the scholarships that we offer are sort of equal for all the students. Okay, nice. Thank you. So for now, we are done with the questions. Well so thanks again and to you, Maya, and thanks also to our students who have joined us today. It was really nice to have you here and thanks to have been so curious and responsive with all your questions. So I hope you learn a lot and that this webinar helped you to discover more about Northeastern University London. So if you're interested in receiving our certificate of attendance, you can click in the link that I'm sharing right now in the chat. So here you have. Uh, so keep in mind that we will share the recording with you in the following days. So uh, check your email. Uh, I would ask to our panelists if you want to leave a message before saying goodbye to our students. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, first of all, thank you so much for having us today, me and Marianne. It was so lovely to meet your students. And I hope this was a useful session. Um, if any of the programs caught your attention and you want to learn more, do stay in touch. Our, our website is a very good resource um, for any of the programs, you know, admissions details, all the requirements, all the requirements are there. But more importantly, uh, we do have a very personalized attention when it comes to working with the students. So if you want to schedule a, a separate chat where, or if you want to schedule a visit to campus, do get in touch with us on our master's email and we'll, we'll connect with you individually. Thank you again so much and have a nice evening. Thank you too. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye. It was you. a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, Stefania.